Hello friends, today it's my huge honor and pleasure to talk to Roger King. Oh, thank you, thank you Rennie for interviewing me and being here at the UK Fruit Festival. Yes. Where we've had a beautiful time. We have had such good speakers, we've had beautiful weather and we've been just blessed in so many ways about finding out more about the raw food lifestyle. Yes. <laughs> so, Roger, you've been raw vegan for how many On, years? Yeah, well, five, nearly five years. I mm -hmm. came to the UK Fruit Festival five years ago when I was about 65, 66 years old. And my dear friend Karen brought me and I thought I could never give up meat, dairy, all sorts of things. Because I was brought up very, very simply on a diet. But the one thing we did have when I was a child, we lived out in the countryside and we always had fruit trees in our, in our track, down the track. And I would pick apples, plums, cherries off the trees. That was years ago. Mm -hmm. So I've always had a love of fruit. Yes. Beautiful. But I'm, I, I have not been completely raw vegan. I have slipped back into being vegan. But now coming here again, I get the information again and again to stay raw vegan. And that's what I want to do, is learn more about how to make myself recipes and I know in my body that my hips have come back in, in, and I feel I can dance because I'm a dancer and I love dancing as you know. Mm -hmm. And just being vegan and, and more and more raw vegan has just helped me open my heart to feeling good about myself, yes. good about what I'm putting into my body, mm -hmm. and good about the work that I do, which is mainly counseling with people mm -hmm. who have been abused. I've done it for 50 years, and I feel so blessed that I've found the raw vegan movement. Yes. And I suppose. In a way, I have let myself down at times when I've slipped back. But I am lucky to live with Karen and she keeps me more and more on purpose. It's much easier to be raw when your partner is raw than yes. when they're not. But I agree, 100%. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But the most important thing is my health. My, exactly. I feel at 71. I'm more alive than sometimes when I was 21. You look younger than that, especially oh. when you're dancing. Yeah. You yeah. look like a teenager when you're dancing. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I just love it. And the people here are so friendly, so open. They will tell their stories to you. And, you know, you, they may have trauma in their lives like we just listened to Chris about his terrible accident in Canada. And he has been raw and he the food that he puts into his body has helped him heal, that's what I see. Yes. Yes, there's the mental, emotional hurt that we'll maybe need lots of working on, but he has done so much in one year to come back from that motorcycle this accident. Is yeah. And of course, Jesse, who yeah. has come back. And I mean, you know, it's just so heartening that we don't have to poison ourselves with hamburgers and milk that comes from, from cows. We're not designed in any way to mm -hmm. drink milk. And it's so lovely that when I go back home, I see my grandchildren and my children gradually changing to vegetarian and more vegan. Mm -hmm. They think that I'm crazy to begin with, but now 
I feel that they're, they're really curious. I can't convince anybody to go vegan and raw vegan unless they see the benefits in yes. me. Yes, yes, that's a good one. Be an example. Yes, and yes. I just want to be an example to my grandchildren. Beautiful. You know, and it's so important that we do change our diet mentally, emotionally, and physically. Yes. And then we're in alignment. Beautiful. Okay. Yes. And what do you feel was your biggest challenge when you started on a raw vegan path? It was to give up the social aspects. Because mm -hmm. people, I loved going out to cafes, I loved um, talking with friends over food, mm -hmm. I'd have a glass of wine, whatever it was. It was just imbibed in me. I, I you know, I just loved that. Mm -hmm. And it was difficult, and I'm learning now more and more to eat a lot more before I go to for a meal, mm -hmm. make it, and have smoothies and other things. Make sure that I have tons of good fruit, yes. good vegetables, yes. salad stuff. Make it before I go anywhere. No. so that I can just have a little salad or something or some fruit or something in the in the cafe and I remember Rosalind saying ring before uh, to a restaurant and say can you make me a big bowl of salad yeah and I'll be your best customer excellent you know yeah. so that I, I really remember that yes. excellent yes mm. what a brilliant advice it is yeah yeah. So I hope you there, also if you are challenged by social aspect of going out with friends and eating, mm. that's a really good tip. Yeah. yeah, I think the other part is that I see so many people um, having dementia. Oh. And Karen works with people who have strokes. Mm -hmm. and she's having to give out pills to people and she keeps on thinking wouldn't it be lovely if they became vegan and possibly raw vegan could they reverse yes. those diseases yes and you know heart attacks are one of the main main killers and the heart is not designed to attack us mm. you know and it seems so sad that human beings are being addicted from McDonald's to all sorts of types of food that are bad for them, which then creates a violence, a, a, a disharmony within mind, body and your, your gut. Yes. That the gut actually is the first brain, this is the second brain. Exactly. And it's just, I just see how we need to create more and more good information for people and it's so good for our animals it's so good for our environment and environment now is being attacked on so many levels not only plastic but in, in uh, pollution of air etc in cities we need to move it is the most revolutionary quiet way of change is becoming vegan and raw vegan. Yes. I, I cannot say how important it is, not only for our own health, but for the health of this world. Yes, so beautiful. Yeah. So it, I wanted to ask you, what is your biggest motivation to continue on uh, this path? When, when you fa face these challenges, what motivated you to continue? I think it, one, it was looking at YouTube videos, yeah. it was educating myself uh, on why be vegan or raw vegan and then to have my partner who was disciplined and consistent and, and was a third force to me that made me mm -hmm. really want yeah. to, to follow her example. And, and coming here to the UK Fruit Festival, five yes. years running. Yes. 
and and mm. I was in the Dutch fruit festival two weeks yeah. ago, yes. and that was wonderful. That first fruit festival in Holland, you yes. know? and I think too, just seeing people like yourself, Annie, and Jess, Grant, and many others, Rosalind, and uh, Doug, you know, who are living their dream. Yes, we definitely do. <laughs> yes. And having you on these festivals is, is such a joy. You make everything so much more loving and uh, bring people together in such a beautiful way. Well, I suppose I've learned as a counselor that one of the most powerful things that can heal somebody is for them to learn how and why to love themselves from a place of yes. deep truth and respect to tell the truth yeah. and to come out of hiding secrets yes and when people do that i think that vegan and raw veganism is is and the next step when you become more truthful with yourself you begin the the universe the universal mind the law of attraction brings you to a place am i putting something good into my body or am I poisoning myself? Yes. So true. Yeah. And secrets, I'm very glad you talk about the secrets and the, that we need to be open about it because my next question is, mm. um, have you had certain moments during your raw vegan lifestyle mm. uh, or maybe early mm. um, that you were either embarrassed or afraid to talk about? And now mm. you would be willing to share. Yes. Well, yesterday I gave a talk to the UK Fruit Festival and it was such a loving audience. I suppose I, I was brought up in fear in a highly dysfunctional family. My parents didn't know how to love themselves, so how could they love me? And I think that my whole journey has been a, around a question, who am I? Mm -hmm. What is my purpose? What is my meaning? And then teachers have come at various points in books or in actual experiences that have shown me loving myself from a place of deep respect and truth has helped me to give more and more unconditional love to people around me. Yeah. And, you know, when people come to me, their self-esteem is so low and I know what that feels like. Yes. And to listen to them with deep, deep empathy. Yes. And I reflect back to them. Maybe there's a possible way for them to forgive themselves, forgive their parents, because they weren't taught the knowledge that we're learning yeah. now. And anybody watching this, I'd say to you, if you're lonely, depressed, isolated, and you feel on the edge of society, one of the best things you could do is begin to think about coming to such a raw vegan festival as this. Yes. Because you will be accepted just as you are and you will talk with lots of people and get inspired by their stories yes. of how they've changed their life and not just it's not just food it's in every area of your life exactly yeah beautiful okay uh, so did did you have yourself uh, some moments that maybe in the past you felt that way, that you were isolated and you were afraid to open up? Oh yes. I think the biggest, toughest time was when I went through my second divorce six years ago. Mm. And I split up from a woman that I thought I would stay with all my life. We spent 25 years together, we had two beautiful children. And I had one beautiful child from my first marriage. And I think that I didn't realize that there was change in me going on that would 
separate me from my wife and there was change going on in her and we couldn't build the bridge mm. we couldn't br bridge the understanding of each other and I suppose that was the toughest time mm -hmm. and that relationship I, I just before I came here actually Rennie I met my wife, ex-wife and we had a lovely time together it was really good and I want to be friends with all people that I've related to either in intimate relationships with my children, with my grandchildren yes. and that intention, affirmation I've put out so many times that my family becomes good friends with me and each other and mm. that is what is happening Beautiful. because so many families part and then somebody doesn't speak to somebody else and somebody doesn't you know and there's a lot of hate and anger and hurt yeah so I've learned forgiveness beautiful forgiveness of myself mainly and people in who initially didn't like how I was living yes yeah well, this is such a beautiful um, advice for people to uh, find this connection. And if it feels like it's not possible, then to have affirmations, mm. right? Um, mm. And it will happen eventually, as long as you have this beautiful intention and pure love. Yes. I often open my arms when I wake up in the morning often early and I would just say I'm open and receptive to divine wisdom now that may sound crazy but actually what comes is a different energy it makes me want to dance it makes me want to write and write something really positive and send it out through social media yes. and sometimes on those social media platforms it's gone out to somebody and they've texted me back and said, I needed to hear that yes. thought. Yes. And, you know, people like Louise Hay, Wayne Dyer, Deepak Chopra, many other teachers who are great writers who make complex knowledge simple mm. to help your mind begin to deprogram the negative that sometimes is in your subconscious mind yes. and to dissolve that negativity in such a way that you feel alive you yeah. feel yeah you vibrate at a different essence yeah. and then it's like every fruit that I've been eating here it, it can supplement that yeah. in your thoughts and it vibrates beautifully you know thought and food yeah can vibrate together and yeah. then you can create miracles in your life beautiful <laughs> well I'm so grateful that you agreed to uh, answer my questions and it is such a pleasure to talk to you and I hope that you will get a lot of inspiration from this video to continue moving forward in your raw vegan lifestyle and also in your spiritual uh, growth a spiritual way thank you thank you so much and thank you if our viewers would like to learn more um, they from can you. they can get me on rogerking.info that's my website mm. and that's got all my contact details you can also join me on my timeline on Facebook which is just Roger King and I, I think I'm on Instagram okay. I'm Roger King author uh -huh. and on um, um, I'm Warrior Love on Twitter. Oh, beautiful. Okay. Beautiful. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. I'm being an just like a child. I love being a child. I love to take each other's head. <laughs>